Welcome back to Autodesk Maya, and this is where we're going to explore the grid in Maya. So uh, as I rotate my scene here, you can see the grid on display here. And mine may look a little bit different than yours because I've colored a little bit different, but uh, I want to show you how to adjust all the features with the grid. First thing I want to show is in these windows here, you'll see this little icon here. It looks like a grid. Uh, you can basically click on that and it'll turn it on and off. So that's one way to turn on and off. You can also go to the display menu here and there's a little checkbox here which allows you to uncheck and recheck. Also note that in the grid uh, next to the checkbox you have the options for the grid. So this little square guy here I'll go ahead and click on that and open it up. So in here you can see you can set the length and width, uh, length and width uh, which right now you know it's at 12 I could set this to like 100 and then click apply and you'll see the grid has grown quite a bit. So that's the overall amount. The grid lines are the red lines here. So if I have a, you know five right now, you can see one, two, three, four, five. If I add um, 10 and then click apply, they'll move outwards more. You can see there it just moved out, bumped out quite a bit. And um, yeah, so you can adjust that however you want. Subdivisions, we could add 10 also and click apply and you can see how that's been subdivided 10 more times across there. Now here is the color options for the grid and you can basically click in here and adjust the color or you can just drag this little slider here and then click apply and it will update. So here's the main axis which this is the center point of the grid. So I like it to be that um, that white actually so I can drag through here until I find it and then click apply again. And you can still do the same thing with the subdivisions. You'll notice the blue here, which is represented in this sort of sort of reddish color. You can also click in, uh, double click in here and, or no, you can't double click. You can just slide along here and, and choose whatever color you want and then click apply. Uh, if we scroll down, we've got display options here. Um, pretty much, you know, these are the sort of default. I think these are all fine. Uh, basically, I'm gonna close out here. And what I want to demonstrate and talk about a little bit is the unit of measurement and how important that is for Maya because typically you want to model to real world scale. And so I'm going to flip to Google here real quick. And what I did here was typed in centimeter to meter and just show you the, the power of 10 here and how the metric system really works. So here you can see 100 kilometers equals uh, 100,000 meters here. But if we set this to say a uh, centimeter you can see here one meter equals 100 centimeters uh, we could set the centimeter at 100 and then leave uh, over here to millimeter and you can see a thousand to a hundred for centimeter so there's always this power relationship of a power of 10 here uh, which makes it very easy to manipulate in a grid and so to get to your measurement setting preferences a couple different ways you can click on the little icon here of the little guy with the chain ring and that opens up your preferences window and then you can click on settings here in the middle here and access the settings i'm going to close out here and show another way to access this if you go to windows and go down to settings and preferences and then just choose preferences and you get the same window and then uh, where everything's at is under the settings options right here so you can choose, by the way, uh, by default, Maya has a Y axis up, but you could choose Z. Some programs prefer Z. I like to keep it at Y, but you could change that. Uh, the measurements, I keep it to centimeter again because of that power of 10, and I recommend you keep it that way. You could choose meter if um, you're modeling things much larger and you don't want so many grid units, um, but basically you have inch, foot, and yard as other options here and of course uh, millimeters which are smaller measurements and then um, the angular I leave in the degrees and film 24 frames per second so I have that and that's basically the default settings but you could click save and then it will be saved up so what makes this important is because if I add a cube here right now I don't know if this is equal to the square unit um, it may or may not be but if we go back to under display of the grid options and we use the power of 10 so if we have 10 10 here for these two and it could be a hundred it doesn't have to be uh, you know 10 it could be a hundred and a hundred 
and then this could be a thousand. As long as you use power of tens and then click apply, uh, it'll work, you know, for the scene here. And then what will happen is as you move this object, uh, which right now I have snapping turned on, uh, it should fit exactly into one of these little squares. And we can test this by tapping spacebar and going to the, say, the front view here. And I can just move it along here. And you can see this is exactly, uh, basically, one unit by one unit by one unit square. So it is exactly that measurement. And if we go to different views, you could test that out by just moving the object in different angles, you know, from the top view. And you can see now that the object is truly one unit by one unit by one unit, which means this is one centimeter. So how does that make that important? Well, let me close this out here and go to the channel box. Again, we're going to get into channel box later on more but I'll go to the creation node, the actual inputs here. And in here, say I want this to be exactly um, 100 uh, centimeters. I can type in 100 here for the width and click out and that will be exactly 100 across. Um, same with depth, I could type in say 200 and then click return and then height, I could set it to say 50 and then hit return. And then so now I have this object which if I click on it and then hit the F key, it'll frame on it. You can see is clearly that exact amount in centimeters. So, uh, which is pretty cool. The other thing I want to share with you is how you can use snapping to the grid. So I'm going to delete this object. So it'll be a little bit easier to show with a little cube here. And I'm going to frame in on it. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn on snapping here, which is the little option here. Cause this does go with the grid. When you, it's the first icon here of these little magnetic sort of icons. If you click on that guy, what will happen is you can see this wants to snap to any point here on the grid, which is cool because it'll allow you to manipulate in terms of, you know, the measurements and so forth. Uh, what can be really powerful is if you go into component mode by right clicking, go to vertex, I can select these vertices and be very precise about where I want it to go. Notice how it's snapping to these grid measurements as I release. Um, if I move it to the side here, it wants to snap to each of these measurements, uh, which is really cool. So it makes modeling uh, very precise that way. Now, if I turn off the snapping, then I can go anywhere I want along here, up and down, and it doesn't snap to that grid. So we'll get into this with more practice and more experience in the future. I just want to show you sort of an overview of, you know, what you could do with it uh, in the future. So that's the overview of the grid and Autodesk Mile. Until next time, cheers.